this edition of Ask the Doc, I got a question from someone who seems to sleep wrong and jacks up their neck at least two times per week. In the video, I cover the following, why sleeping isn't what is causing the problem, two common issues that cause the neck to get jacked up, what is the best pillow to use for proper sleeping positions, and some tips and tools you can use to keep this from happening. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on finding and fixing scar tissue and then reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning, flexibility, and long-lasting pain relief. So back at it for Ask the Doc. Just a reminder, you can send any questions directly to me on neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist injuries. And if my insights can help, I'll be sure to make a video for you. Uh, this week's question came from YouTube. Let me read the question. It was, it seems like at least one to two times per week, I've managed to get a really deep and restful sleep only to wake up with my neck all jacked up and in pain trying to move it or turn my head. It seems like these episodes are getting more frequent and intense. I have tried to stretch my neck more, bought 10 different kinds of pillows that all suck, and also tried to either go to the chiropractor or get a massage at least one time per month. Regardless of what I do, it always comes back and jacks me up. What is going on and why would something as important as restful deep sleep keep messing me up? Thank you so much for sending that question in. It's a common question that I get all the time. And a lot of patients and clients say to me, oh, I just slept on my neck wrong and that's what's going on. The issue here, it really wasn't the sleep that did it. It's actually some underlying things that are causing these problems, uh, specifically in the neck and outside of the neck as well. So I want to cover each one of them. The first one is actually what's called a sclerotome or disc referral pain. You know, I can show you here in the diagram, there's these different sclerotomes in the body, basically different levels of your spine and your nerves kind of control different areas in the body. And a lot of times when the discs get really irritated, really jacked up, they can refer some pain down there. So a lot of times when people are getting pain like deep in their shoulder blade and they're having trouble turning their head from side to side, a lot of times there's a lot of irritation to the disc. So the disc kind of sits in between the spine and it serves as a really good shock absorber. It's really good at handling force like this kind of up and down, but over time with bad posture, sitting, looking down too much, not moving enough, stretching, stress, all sorts of stuff. It puts a lot of wear and tear on that disc. So now the disc starts to kind of slide and grind on itself and it's not designed to do that. When that happens, it creates a lot of inflammation, a lot of pain. And then there's this jelly like substance that's inside the disc and it starts to squeeze out. And when it squeezes out, it puts a lot of pressure on the nerves and everything around there. And usually what happens is your disc is actually bigger when you sleep because gravity is not acting on you as much. So it's about 20% bigger in the morning. When this happens, it puts pressure onto that disc, causes that pain in there. So when you wake up and you can't turn your head, a lot of times there's just some irritation to that disc and a lot of factors cause that just building up over time, but then the sleep. And a lot of times when you're in that restful sleep, you kind of end up being in one position for too long. It's bad for your neck and it can really inflame that disc. So that's the first problem that happens. The next problem that I end up seeing is there's a little nerve that comes out with the back part of your ear, goes down here and goes right to the top of the trap. It's called your accessory nerve. I'm gonna show it here in the video as well. Basically what happens is that nerve goes down and it really just has two jobs. It's supposed to control this front muscle in here called your SCM and then the back trap muscle as well. But over time, like I said, with bad posture, looking down, stress, not moving enough, watching too much TV, just being sedentary, what happens is you're kind of stuck in this like flex position. When that happens, the muscles don't get enough blood flow and they don't get enough not oxygen. Over time, what that does is it develops this stuff called scar tissue. I talk about scar tissue all the time. It's like glue that gets inside the muscles, makes the muscle less flexible, makes it weaker. Eventually, it gets bigger and bigger, and then that nerve gets stuck. And when that nerve gets stuck, it creates a lot of tension, a lot of burning, a lot of pain, and it will feel like you can't turn your head as well. A lot of times, that accessory nerve is getting caught as well. And then laying down in that position, you might stretch it too far, you might load it too much, and it's going to create a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort. And that feeling when you can't like, turn your head or move how you're supposed to. It's a protective way of your body to unload that nerve because if the nerve continues to get irritated, things don't work. So your body will tighten everything up in order to take the pressure off of there. And that's what's happening and get in that bad position. So that's the second problem that can cause that. So I get lots of questions about what's the best pillow out there, what's going to make 
the neck function better, feel better throughout sleep. I've tried a bunch of pillows um, throughout the years. The best pillow that I found is this pillow called a Therapeutica sleeping pillow. It's actually really cool. You get measured from your ear out to your shoulder. It's really good if you do want to lay on your back or lay on your side. It keeps things nice and neutral. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but it's the best pillow that I found. I recommend it for all my patients. I use it myself and it's really just keeps you in a good position. The problem is a lot of people start with getting the pillow first and you have to actually get all the tissue cleaned up by a soft tissue treatment expert and then after you do that then we need to strengthen the muscles in the neck you know your neck actually has a core in the front of it just like your your mid um, part of your spine there's some core muscles in here as well and they get really weak and overused so first step is we need to take the pressure off those discs in there. And that's treating all the muscles around there, getting that scar tissue cleaned up, then getting that nerve entrapment freed up as well. Then the tissue is functioning better. It's moving better. Then we get it strong. Then the pillow will be really good to help keep it in a good place. But a lot of people don't get any of the tissue cleaned up and then they get right into the pillow and it actually feels worse, doesn't feel comfortable. It's putting more and more pressure in there and causing a lot more issues, which is why you got to get the tissue cleaned up first. So a couple of tips and tools you can use to maybe keep this from happening or at least not getting as intense. Uh, number one, I always talk about is when you first get up in the morning, the first thing you should do is get really hydrated. You know, try to drink about 20 to 30 ounces of water. As soon as you get up, that might seem like a lot, but when you've been sleeping all night, your discs are dehydrated, they're inflamed, that water really helps. And then the other thing I like people to do is just get up and move around for a little bit. Even if you walk around the house for five minutes, it starts to get that disc pumping a little bit, getting that fluid in there, getting all that inflammation out of there. So it's not going to be inflamed throughout the day. The next thing I always talk about, I have this rule called the four finger rule. And basically the idea is that anytime that you're looking down at a device, you should have at least four fingers in between here when you're looking down. It keeps your neck in a really good neutral position. It's not four closed fingers, it's four open fingers in through there as well. That's just really good mechanics for your neck to keep you from just being in that downward position, always accumulating that scar tissue. Another thing that I think really helps is I call it 10 minute laydowns throughout the day. So, hey, say you're going really crazy, you're working on the computer all day, you're looking down, you know, take a break go for a little walk for about five minutes and then just set a timer and lay down on the floor. What that does is it just decompresses everything, lets things kind of settle down, keeps that inflammation from building up all day long and really can help from putting pressure on the disc at night so you're not waking up really feeling lousy. And lastly, as you know, it might sound like a broken record here, but clean up the diet, quit eating crap, get the inflammation under control by not eating garbage. That's gonna be a big thing in there. So hydrate, move, four finger rule, lay down and not eat crap, just be a normal human, it's going to help keep that inflammation at bay. So if you do need treatment help, you know, help with the treatment side of things to get the tissue healthy, you know, getting the pressure off of those discs, getting that accessory nerve freed up, you can reach out to us and we can get you set up with a peak method certified provider somewhere in your area. We have people all over the country, all over the world, and we can get you on the path to functioning better, feeling better, but most importantly, not having a jacked up neck. You know, all the information to request that can be found wherever you're consuming this video in our profile. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.